How's everybody doing? Welcome to the first episode of Millionaire Mindset. I'm John. This is Troy. Thank you for tuning in. Um, we're shooting inside today because of the weather. The weather kind of drove us inside, so we don't have our scenery behind us. So today, we're going to have to be the scenery. <laughs> so um, today, what we want to talk about is who controls your thoughts. And I know people probably saying, I control my thoughts. That's what everybody say. Nobody control me. I control my own thoughts. But do you control your own thoughts? Or is your thoughts dictated by who raised you, by society, by your friends? Um, and if we go back to, to school for a second, and we think about in elementary school when we format in a story or a paragraph, and the teacher tells us, you know, to get to the, the point of the story, you gotta address the who, what, when, where, why, and how. And if we apply that same philosophy to our life, we wanna address those issues when we're talking about uh, who are we listening to? Let's start there with who are we listening to? Who are you listening to? Right now I'm listening to you. <laughs> um, the most valuable commodity I know of is information. Before I go on, I want to quote from Napoleon Hill's classic, Think and Grow Rich. And we, we talk about a mindset, we talk about reaching success. Napoleon Hill said, before success comes in any man's life, he is sure to meet with much temporary defeat and perhaps some failure. Think about that. When defeat overtakes a man, the easiest and the most logical thing to do is quit. That is exactly what majority of the men do. So, so when you think about that, you thinking about, I don't know if anybody's ever heard the term taking a short-term L to get a long-term W. If you were gonna give an example of that, just think about you working a job, maybe it's a stable job, and, but you have high aspirations. You wanna, you wanna go to school and get a degree in a certain field. So maybe you gotta work part time, or maybe you gotta move back home and quit your job altogether for you to go back to school. That was a short term L, you moved back to move forward. Moving back is not always a bad thing because we always have to reanalyze our life. Um, I know, for instance, with, with truck driving, I'll give you a quick example and I'll relate it to something I, I know. When we was in school and we, we did our parking maneuvers, we lost points for every time we did a pull-up. So we always had the saying, no pull-ups, like no do-overs, you gotta get it in one shot. But the person that pulls up and readjusts and get right, that was somebody who saw what they were doing, knew that they were doing it wrong, and, and caught it. Caught it early enough to say, I'm gonna just pull forward, readjust, and come back. Think about life like that. Sometimes we so determined to do something one way, do it, the, the way we were taught, that we don't stop to take a do-over. We look like a, as the do-over as failure, but the do-over is not failure. You, you recognize the best coaches, in the make a sports analogy, the best coaches are able to adjust their game plan in game. You come into a game, the best battle plan is, is good until the first blows is drawn. Now you're throwing it out and adjusting to what the, your opponent is doing. That's what great people do. That's what successful people do. Success is not running something into the hole regardless of what because you have tunnel vision and one idea and one way to achieve your goal. Success. What is success? You want a million dollars, you want a billion dollars, you want a trillion dollars. It's, it's whatever you want. You want to be a math teacher. That's success. Earl Nightingale's definition of success was the progressive realization of a worthy ideal. Well, an ideal is simply an idea that you've fallen in love with. And mm -hmm. you love it so much that by all means, that's what you're going to get. You're going to chase that ideal until you achieve it. Think about goals like this. An airplane leaves from BWI Airport. If it don't have a destination, what will happen? No, it turns out the tongue is going to crash in the air or before it even lands. It's going to fly around and run out of gas, too, because they don't know where it's going. You must have a destination. What is yours? So, to be me, 
I gotta be free to be you. You have to to be free. You must be you. What you uh, gonna say? I was gonna say, and I just thought of uh, uh, two stories real quick. When we speak about success, and this is goes back to who are you listening to and what what makes your perception. Um, let's say, for instance, you have a female single mother struggling to take care of your kids and you come across this person and you say, hey, like, you know, you're struggling. I know things are rough for you. You know, what are you good at? What do you want to do? And this person says, I want to I want to be a nurse. Um, I went to Fortis or one of those nursing schools and they said I got to put at least $800 down. And the only way I know how to get the $800 is, you know, I can dance, you know, I thought about stripping. It's not morally acceptable. You should judge for it. But let's say, for instance, you come across this person and you take the moral acceptance out of it and you say, oh, you know what? Go away to strip. And this person, she goes to strips. She doesn't care what anybody say. I, let me correct what I, meant, what I meant to say. She doesn't care what nobody thinks. She doesn't care that it's morally unacceptable. She goes and strips. She gets stable money, she get consistent money, she stack her bread, children good, and she pays her way into school, she get her nursing degree, she works in her field. People would say, oh, she just a stripper, don't matter what she did, blah, 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 but she reached a level of success. She accomplished her goal. Let's turn that around and say, someone who goes to school, they get a degree in a particular field, and then they graduate from school and they start working in another field that they were passionate about. And they swimming in thousands of dollars of debt and not even in the field they went to school for. And you go ask that person and say, hey, like, why are you in so much debt? Why are you not the biology major that you were a biologist? You went to school for biology. And they say, oh, my parents wanted me to go to school. So I just went to college. I picked the major. But my passion was always photography. So that person accomplished, got a college degree, but they swimming in debt to do something that they could have did without even going to college because they were trying to live someone else's dream. So the moral of the story is, both stories is, one person did something morally unacceptable that people would judge her for or look down on her for, but she reached her goal. If you reach every goal somebody else sets out for you, but you never reach one goal that makes you happy or that you want it, are you still successful? The second person, they got that college degree that they parent wanted. They, they did everything they were supposed to do, but they left their passion behind. Is that person still successful? That's the question. So, success, how do you attain it? Well, just look at what everybody else that's unsuccessful is doing. You do the opposite. It's making the most of your time. This is the secret of the, the, the people that's really controlling everything. Who do they take their advice from? Winners. So who do you listen to is what he was just asking. Who are you listening to? Are you listening to people that's accomplished what you're trying to do? Or are you listening to people that's just guessing? I would better. I would bet my life with people that's really already did it. Um and can show me how to do it. I understand it versus having people guess with your life. You, if, if you can guess with your own life. Um, Definitely um, gambling with somebody else's life when you give that type of advice. So it's, it's kind of like when, when people give you advice, do they give you advice that's exclusive to you or are they giving you general advice that they would tell anybody, you know? And when you think about things like that, um, think about, for instance, when you're a child and people ask you what you want to be when you grow up. Typically, everybody gives an occupation, as if the occupation defines who you are. And when you do that, you know, you kind of limit yourself in the sense of, I know when I was young, I, I didn't have a particular occupation. So that I wanted to be. So sometimes I would feel like a failure because everybody else would say, oh, I want to be X, Y, the fireman, policeman, you know, the normal stuff. But I never had none of those because I never wanted to be. But I did know I wanted to be happy. I do know I wanted to, a family. I do know I wanted to, I wasn't using the word energy back then as a child, but I just knew I wanted to be the type of person when I walked into a room, 
I changed the way people felt. I changed the way people thought. And so in that sense, I feel like I reached a level of success in my life right now. It's always different levels. You always want to attain more. But I feel like I've, everybody I come in contact with, I feel like in a close setting, not just random you know, settings, but in close settings, I feel like I impact people's life in a positive manner for the most part. You know, and I feel like I don't have any problems. I, if I want to find something to complain about, you could always find something to complain about. When you ask people how was their day, a lot of people find the one little isolated little area that they was bad, and they elaborate on that and tell you about that part of their day. But when you ask me what am I unhappy about, it's not, it's not anything. I would have to really dig deep and think about what's making me unhappy. Because overall, I feel like I've reached a level of comfort and success, and that was our purpose in doing this, is to say, life is never going to be perfect. It's, it's, it's never going to be... Excellence is, is not an act. It's a habit. So excellence is getting up every day with that hundred, maintaining that hundred throughout the day, and... If you live every day like that now, you'll always have bad days. And I, we're not speaking about, you know, grief. Grief is a whole different level. You know, if someone passed away in your family or that's close to you, your day is going to be shot. You know, so we're not speaking of those. We're just talking about every, your normal, every day. You got to pick yourself up. We, we got to make sure that we move in conducive to a winning lifestyle because at the end of the day, he says it all the time. All we want to do is see everybody win. And that's it. Do you know who you are? Do you know how much energy you are? Your potential. You know how deep your potential goes? Do you know that you're God's greatest, greatest creation? Do you know that everything in nature reaches its max potential except for you? Think about it. Nobody stops a tree from growing unless they cut it down. But if you leave a tree to be able to grow as high as 90 feet in some places. So... We need to figure out how do we tap into this infinite source within us that makes us great at it. You know, how do we see successful people and then the first thing that comes to our mind is that we can't do it. Who are you listening to? It's going straight back to who do you listen to? If you turn the news on and you, as he said, we're creatures of habit. If you turn the news on for three straight weeks, Dr. Maxwell Maltz and psycho said that it takes 21 days to form a habit. So in three weeks, if you watch the news every day, and they give you different segments, four, five, six in the evening, six, four, five in the morning, and you watch this news, and you constantly hearing the same thing over and over, this is bad over, everything they say in segment A block, B block, C block, it's all negative. What do you think you're gonna see when you walk outside? Who are you listening to? You listening to a news anchor that's feeding you garbage, that's feeding you negativity. How are you gonna think you can ever win if you never positive? You don't get positivity out of negativity. It's impossible. With ignorance comes doubt, worry, and fear. With knowledge comes happiness, health, and wealth. Which one do you choose? I'm gonna say this. Faith and fear both rely on you to believe in something that you can't see. That's real shit. Which one do you choose? Yeah. Do you choose to continue to move out of fear because that's what your habitual nature is and that's what you've been doing since you was a kid? That's what your mother was doing. That's what your aunts was doing. We grew up, us, us from the 80s and 90s, we've seen some things that the people in the 70s and 60s didn't really have to see. As well, they've seen things that we didn't see. But I'm talking about, you want to talk about morals? We're talking about people that sold their bodies for crack cocaine. This is something that we have to, this is what's impregnated in our mind from kids. And it's on the TV, it's on the movies we watch. Think about this. Think about your emotional mind. Now, I want to elaborate on something. When people tell you to believe in your heart, I'm going to stand up and say that it's not this heart. What happens is the Greeks used to re refer to the heart as, as the subconscious mind. So 
emotionally get involved with what you want to accomplish and then you'll be able to accomplish it. If there's no emotion back of what you're saying or back of what you're trying to do, you'll fail. You probably already failed before you even set sail because you don't even believe in yourself. This is basic information, but it would seem exotic because nobody ever shared this with us. How many of us sat down and had a parent teach us about writing goals out? Who's told you that the faculties of your mind is thinking, the thinking faculty, your reasoning, the, the being able to think and come up with a reason? Whoever told you that this was a tool of your mind? Everybody told, and we all know, you hear, see, smell, taste, and touch. But how many, these are physical senses. These are physical factors. What about your higher faculties? What about the faculties that allows you to see yourself in, the, in 10 years, which is your imagination, your thinking, your reasoning, your imagination, your intuition? The faculty of emotions. These are all real things. These are all real tools that we have to use in everyday life for us to attain what we're trying to reach. Without without imagination, this video wouldn't even be possible. We we on a cell phone. Think think about think about that. You know when really? we when we kids we use our imagination all the time, and as we get older, you always hear you got to be more realistic. The man who made the cell phone, was he realistic when he was talking to the group? Think every great invention, the person, they thought the person was mad. They thought Einstein was crazy. Nikola Tesla, that's my guy. You know, the, the Tesla car, like, you know, it's a lot of things that's being designed now based off of some of his writings back in the 20s and 30s when he was considered crazy. Mm -hmm. Cell phone technology. So the imagination is our biggest gift and biggest tool because if we... If you tap into what we're talking about tapping into, however, whatever you want to phrase it, whatever you want to call it, energy, spirit, the, the deep core inside it, whatever you want to say, if you tap into that, you can do anything you imagine because the, the imagination is limitless. And if you can think of what, what you say in the first, if you believe it, you can achieve it. Or whatever Napoleon Hill can conceive and believe. and believe he can achieve. That was some, that was dope, cause that, that touched me. That was the first time I heard that because that's true. And I feel like, I feel like for real, I feel like we had some other points to touch on, but I really feel like that was enough. We covered enough for right now, and I feel like we had a great point to just stop. And I want to thank y'all for listening. We probably had about 14, 15, 16 minutes. If you got the time. Watch it while you're driving to work. Well, you should be watching. <laughs> Please don't watch it while you're driving to work. He's trying listen, to show somebody. Listen to it. You just plug it in your phone. Most of y'all, it take you 15, 20 minutes to get to work or more. Rarely less than that. So, you know what I mean? If you got the time, pop us in while you while you riding to work. While you getting yourself together in the morning. You ain't got to look at us, even though we nice to look at. But, you know, really what we're trying to do is get you to listen. And we're trying to listen as well. So, give us any feedback. Give us topics, whatever you feel like, you know, we do. We're going to get better. Like I said, this is just the first episode. So pardon any, any uh, interruptions and inconsistencies. <laughs> we got people coming in and out, rude people, you know. But anyway, thank you for joining us. Hope you guys listen. Hope you guys like. Um, so hit the like button. Drop a comment. The greatest investment you can make is in yourself. Give us feedback. Tell us what you don't like. Tell us what you do like. Feel free. It's not us giving you orders. It's us helping you. Somebody's got to lead the field. The follower following the follower ain't going to get nobody nowhere. So I want to thank everybody from the past, from the from the last episode. I never got to thank y'all. Thank you. Um, y'all, the, seeing the likes and comments really inspired this one even more. So... It's a, it's you know, it's it's beautiful to be able to share information because we can't, it, you know, it's a giver's game, and and maybe one of the next lessons we can get into the laws of giving and receiving because so many people got this law backwards. <laughs> you think you're gonna receive something before you give it? it don't work that way. But thanks again for joining us and signing off. We we'll see y'all again.